course, uh, the, this uh, plane sort of ties in with the whole kind of Cars world. I was wondering if you were big fans of that movie and how much that inspired you to get involved in this project. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of, of the Cars franchise. You know, John Lasseter and I, we've, we've had many discussions about we're sort of geeks on planes, trains, cars, all that kind of stuff, you know, machines in general. So um, when the opportunity came up, as I was looking for another movie, John suggested planes, and that's kind of how the whole thing sort of happened. I mean, it's a wonderful concept, isn't it? The idea of a plane that's afraid of heights. Is that something that attracted you both as well to this project? It did. You know, it's always great to get conflict in there right away, and it seems so absurd, but it's also relatable. There's a lot of people that are afraid of heights, and it just, it was a fun kind of little character trait to have a plane who is afraid of heights. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was a great starting point for us. So what was sort of Pixar's involvement in this, in this title? Well, you know, actually, it was more John Lasseter, not Pixar. Um, we're actually Disney Toon Studios producing the film. So John was an executive producer, very hands-on on the film. You know, this, Clay likes to say it, it's like John handed us one of his newborn babies to go and raise. So he came in and trusted us and worked with us all the way through the process. Yeah, he's a, he's a creative tour de force and an amazing inspiration. And he was there at all times. So it was that kind of thing. It was a collaboration of working with him, drafting mm -hmm. off the 10 years that those guys had done, and then giving us the opportunity to just run with it. It was clear, I mean, you've been involved in, in various sort of, uh, children's animation That's productions. Correct. I was wondering, what is it about this particular genre that appeals to you? The genre of... of, of kind of uh, just, uh, just children's animation. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I just, I, you know, I guess deep down, I'm sort of old-fashioned in some respects. I like sweet stories. I like positive things. I, I like the hero to win. You know, um, and and I like heart. I really love heart when it comes through in films I like to feel things like that. It's kind of easy to do. I mean, I was in the other stuff. You know, it's easy to do those other types of comedies and other things. But this one, this has always been me. This is my soul of 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 as you say. You know, this type of film. So. And the nice thing with animation is even though it's sometimes perceived as a children's medium, you can actually tell really sophisticated stories that everybody can relate That's to. That's right. So Tracy, this is your first role as a producer. How it did you is. find this experience? It's been phenomenal. I mean, like, how, how much more could I ask for, right? Working yeah. on a film of the world of cars with Clay and John Lasseter produced at Disney. I mean, couldn't ask for more. Well, it yeah. must be such great fun for you both to kind of, uh, that the opportunity to depict different parts of the world in animation. I mean, when they're sort of flying over Germany or the Himalayas or India, yeah. it must have been great fun to kind of play around with that. It was. It was great fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, we had a tremendous art team led by Ryan Carlson, our art director. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of fun. We actually were lucky enough to go out on location to several of those areas and, and witness them firsthand, take lots of pictures and talk to the people. You know, it also gave us a chance, as you were saying, sort of, you know, for the world, to make it a rich world, to make it the movie sort of, you know, relate worldwide, different colors, different ethnicities, mm -hmm. different cultures, all that kind of stuff. We like to call it planifying the world. Yeah, planifying the world. Yeah. I think there was one point where uh, first, second, third, and fourth in the contest were all American planes. I was like, whose idea was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that was only for a brief moment. Yeah. <laughs> Very brief. And you, you've assembled a, a wonderful voice cast, and a lot of actors who are sort of more, quite experienced, a bit sort of older. I was wondering uh, what the decision was to do that and what you feel, felt they could bring to the production. Well, certainly um, a lot of experience right up front, you know. And I'm a big fan of stand-up comedians. I think comedy plays universally and also... Um, you know, uh, what those guys were able to bring to it, I just, you know, it was a great sense of fun and a, and, a, and a fun spirit in the movie that I think, you know, goes throughout the film. So that kind of casting, that had a lot to do with it. And then certainly, you know, just looking for unique voices and, and just having fun with that whole thing, you know. Yeah, and the planes we use run the gamut of when they were created, so right. they're not all brand new. So, I mean, I've just spent five minutes with John Cleese and had a whale of a time. It must have been great to have worked oh, with him for a few, few weeks. Yeah. He's fantastic. You know, he's a, he's a legend in his own time. And I've been a big fan of his from Python days and Faulty Towers and so on. And when I actually got to work with him, it was truly a dream come true. Of course, there was a, a change of uh, lead actor as, as far as this film is concerned, mm -hmm. from John Cryer to, to Dane Cook, who obviously plays the role of Dusty. Right. But that must have been quite stressful for you and that all that was sort of ongoing. It was, but you know, movie making is stressful in a lot of ways. It's just part of it's just part of the way things go, you know. And as the character over a long period of time, you know, this was a four and a half year production. As the character uh, of Dusty changed and grew and things like that, you know, the role changed, and so that's how it happened. That's how it sort of came about. 
And there have been uh, t- talks of a, of a sequel. I was wondering if that was something you both be interested in doing and what you felt you could do with the, the planes world. Well, I think our next project is uh, respectively vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, luckily it seems that the world of cars could be endless as long as there's a good story to support it. And it seems like the world of planes right now, the planes as we know it, has um, created a world that's deep enough to support another story. I mean, Disney released about a week, week and a half ago that Planes, Fire and Rescue would be out a year after us. So there is a sequel and it's got a date. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I suppose yeah. the only uh, ones left are trains. We need a film about trains now, and then we'd, be, we'd have the whole set, I guess. Well, you know, uh, you never know. I mean, it really comes down to just great stories. If someone can crack a great story, it's endless. You know, John's always said that the, this world is, is huge. And all those characters, all those different vehicles and machines can all be made into personalities and characters. So we'll see. Oh, William, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good questions. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.